Hi, I'm Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about great things that are happening across the landscape of what I consider to be one of the greatest communities on this planet, Huntsville, Alabama, and Madison County. We're always privileged when you take the time to spend with us, and I thank all of those well-wishers who from time to time say, you've watched the show, you've been inspired by information that we've shared, or simply informed about the guest or by the guests that we have on the show. In our last broadcast, we talked with Dr. Zaire Khan, who is the founder of the Center for Aging based right here in Huntsville, Alabama. And Dr. Khan was sharing such great information that I was just so excited that we kind of ran out of time, but I also was looking for a way to get him back on the show so we can finish our conversation on the issues and challenges affecting that demographic known as the elderly population. Well, Dr. Khan has graciously agreed to come back, and he's on our broadcast today to finish that conversation. Dr. Zahir Khan, welcome back to Impact. Thank you, Kenny. It's good to have you once again. And in our last conversation, we talked all about the Center for Aging, the work that you're doing. We talked about issues related to falling, but I wanted to talk a little bit about medication and the elderly as well. I am one of those people who has just said, I'm going to do everything I can to prevent having to take medication for anything. That means I've got to watch what I eat. That means I've got to exercise properly. That means I've got to sleep well. I mean, you've got to do all these things, but the price that I pay to do those things, rather than be in some of the circumstances and situations that I've seen people in, taking many, many medications seems to be a much more viable option for me. But I know that the challenge is real because as we get older, disease becomes more real and illness becomes more real. So let's talk a little bit about the whole notion of medication in our society today as it relates to the elderly. Um, I'm curious, in your, just the trends that you see in your work, um, at what age generally do you see that increase in medication begin for the population out there? Yeah, Generally it is, I'm not talking about those people who are, uh, have the tragedy of having disease at an early age. Right. But after the age of 60, there's a cumulative number of diseases that start to happen. Mm -hmm. At the age of 65 in the United States, more than one in three people have at least three diseases mm. requiring more than five medications. At the age of 65? 65. Wow. And as they get older, it keeps increasing. Mm. So we want to educate the community about medications and aging and diseases. Mm. Now, just to point out the epidemic problem we are having in the country today. When I speak and I informed one conference that medicines have the fourth leading cause of death in America. Mm. That means after heart disease, stroke, cancer, medicines are causing death. The fourth leading cause of death. Correct. That's significant. Correct. Wow. And they are responsible for more than 50% of visits to the hospital. And it's a, it's, I call it a hidden epidemic. Mm. And they, it's hidden because you can't prove it. Mm. You cannot prove by a test mm. that the medicines are causing the problem. Mm. Now, there is a condition, new terminology which I think the community needs to know, and it's called polypharmacy. Mm. Polypharmacy means if you take more than four medications. Why is that important? It is important because if you take five pills, you have a 50% chance of a negative drug to drug interaction, oh. drug to disease, and drug to food interaction. Mm. And when this happens, they get a symptom of a disease. Now, when they go to the health professional, they interpret this new symptom as from a disease mm. when, in fact, it is from the existing medication. Wow. Wow. And they give one or more medications to treat the side effect of the existing medication. Wow. And that is called prescribing cascade. Mm. You're adding mm. problems. Mm. So we want to train the community into new science called deprescribing, okay. which means you go to a health professional, the first thing they come out is a pen without much thought process. Mm. 
-hmm. because we are trained that way. Mm -hmm. When you're holding your pen to write a medicine, mm -hmm. you should know this may harm your patient. Mm -hmm. You must think 100 times, mm -hmm. am I helping my patient? Mm -hmm. Is this drug, how is it going to help? Mm -hmm. How is it going to interact with the existing medications that he's taking? Mm -hmm. And once you analyze that, then you must also ask them to subtract what you previously added. Mm. And so what we are now noticing that the patients, uh, I tell in a joking way to all my patients, they, they are all physicians. They come to us for second opinion. <laughs> and so they're taking over-the-counter medications. Yeah. Uh, one study in Iowa showed that multivitamins are harmful to older people. Mm. confirmed beyond doubt in the research. Mm. For healthy people who have a normal nutrition, if you take multivitamins, you're harming yourself. Mm. And when you're adding the herbs, supplements over the counter, those are as bad as prescription medicines. Wow. So we call it a double-edged sword. Mm. And I tell many of my students, we are not putting down medicines at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, Medicines have saved millions of lives. Mm -hmm. Medicines have helped people with pain, mm -hmm. suffering, mm -hmm. eradication of infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. Millions and millions of people have been saved. Mm -hmm. We are talking the other side of the coin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. So you would, I was interested, and I'm glad you said that, uh, about how, you, how you're perceived by other physicians uh, in your field. Uh, do they see you as an anti-medication guy because I don't, I don't hear that in you. I hear you giving another perspective yeah. on the condition that's created yeah. once medication is introduced. Um, but how are you perceived by others in the field? Well, I, we, we, we think because they understand that I'm in this community for 20 years mm -hmm. and they can access and analyze what I did. And we are going through a scientific, evidence-based, mm -hmm. metho methodically, Mm -hmm. going through a process of educating the patient and the family. Mm -hmm. And so they recognize and respect that training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we, we health professionals, whether you take uh, caregivers or you take somebody who's working as a uh, whatever capacity mm -hmm. you are, mm -hmm. you are a member of a team to help your patients who are suffering, mm -hmm. a suffering human being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're positively impacting that suffering person, and if you do it over a period of 20 years, people will, will respect you and will give you a pat on the back. <laughs> well, I have not had any professional uh, telling me that I shouldn't do something. Yeah. And so I really didn't have any complaint as far as I know. Sure. But of course, when you talk of new things, you come out openly, you irritate, a, you know, you cause little waves. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have worked in the war areas as a volunteer with Doctors Without Borders mm -hmm. in Kurdistan mm -hmm. for seven years. Mm -hmm. I worked in uh, cholera camps in poor countries. Mm -hmm. So I basically, you know, my job uh, uh, given to me by God yeah. is yeah. to help my patients. Yeah. I'm curious that sometimes, and I think the medication thing really struck me two significant times in my life. I'm a mental health counselor by trade and practice for 20 years. And so, so many times I would see parents who came in with the check sheet behavioral check sheet talking about, you know, what about that Ritalin? What about that Adderall? You know, because <laughs> they were told that their kid had, say, 20 of the 25 features on there. And so the first thing they started thinking about was, let me medicate my child, which, of course, would always be a shock to their system when I said, well, hang on just a minute now. Um, I understand what you're wanting, but let's look at the whole person, again, as you said, so I can certainly connect to that. And then the whole notion of after a while of, or many years of watching these um, medication commercials where, you know, um, yeah, this uh, particular drug will treat this, but then, uh, you know, your, your blood may, you may have, you know, bloody nose and you may have headaches, you may have dizziness, fainting spells, uh, your ear may fall off, your nose may, you know, whatever. And, and it's kind of like, it gets pretty scary when you start thinking about the side effects of some of these things. Um, as you talk to patients and they may raise certain issues about, the number of medications that they're taking or the impact of taking so many medications, what kinds of things do you say to them to help them really understand the journey? Because a lot of people come in wanting the medication, thinking that that's the answer. Yeah. What we are doing is a multi-approach. 
we are educating the uh, nursing school, Hans University of Alabama at Huntsville. Mm -hmm. We are teaching a lot of nurses in the hospital and in the offices. So we are creating a teamwork. Mm -hmm. For example, the last conference we had, very successful, where we had one of the leading physicians, scientists in the world, Dr. Milton Brown came to us. Mm -hmm. We were privileged and honored mm -hmm. when he came. Mm -hmm. And he, in fact, pointed this out that the trials for the medicines are not being done in the elderly, they're doing in college students. Mm. So how do we know mm. that a medicine that was done in a trial affects my 90-year-old patient? Mm. We don't have evidence. Mm. And so I think it's a long road we are going to have with the baby boomers coming in. Mm. Our system will not be sustained mm. if we don't sit back mm. and take a second look at it mm. from a very evidence-based approach. Mm. And as you said about, this, the, about the population you had, the population above 80 years old is rising four times more than the general population. Wow. And 50% of them will have dementia and Alzheimer's. Wow, 50%? Correct. Wow. At the age of 85, 50%. Most of it's unrecognized. Wow. So when they come and tell you, I'm a headache, they're not exactly able to express what the problem was. Mm. So we need to create skilled workforce mm. to teach them communication skills mm. of how do you understand a patient who cannot express himself. Wow, yeah. So many things that are being discovered and so many challenges that are still faced. And I wonder what you see in addition to the kinds of things you've, you've talked to us about so far, what the frontier of this is as you think about working with this population um, what other things are out there that have yet to be discovered? Not just, just in, I'm not just talking about cures per se, but just in terms of the, the socio, uh, the, the social dynamics of people's lives, the uh, various challenges that they face physically with the aging process. You already talked about the emotional kinds of things. You know, as we get older, um, our inner circle becomes smaller, so there's more isolation at times because of that. At the same time, we've seen an explosion of assisted living facilities because Americans are living longer. And so I just wonder, as you think about the work you're doing now, are there maybe frontiers out there that have not been approached yet that you see coming down the line that are going to have to be addressed? Yeah, I think the, the, the answer is written in the books on psych psychiatric sociology, uh, psychogeriatrics, problems of aging of a nation, how it can break the system. You know, Dr. Milton Brown told me something that I never thought about it. He said that when he went to China, there was a major, major epidemic problem that is happening there. And he said, Dr. Khan, do you know about the aging problem that I said, sir, I, I'm not sure where, what, what your question is. So he said, this is what I was told by the Chinese doctors, that the single baby, as a husband and wife, they have to take care of four older people now. And some of the grandparents are living. So one child has to look after five people. Wow. So what we need is a community program. Mm. That is why we establish a community-based program because the physician can take care of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They cannot. Mm -hmm. and, and as you mentioned, one of the greatest, uh, what do you call, challenges is depression. I'm living alone. Spouse has passed away. Friends are gone. They don't call, mm. and you're alone. Mm. Children have left the empty nest, mm -hmm. and you're just looking at the roof and the television, and, yeah. and life passes by. Yeah. So particularly with the people getting older and older, we need community programs, yeah. support groups yeah. uh, to help. Yeah. This is also fascinating, uh, and I really wish we had more time. If I didn't have other guests I've got to talk to, I definitely want to do another segment. But Dr. Khan, I hope that you're available uh, from time to time so we can revisit this conversation and other things as they develop along the way. This is an absolutely fan uh, fantastic and fascinating discussion that we should have. And when we're talking about these community initiatives that need to happen, this is part of where it begins with community dialogues. And that's exactly why I wanted to talk to you in this uh, process. So thank you once again for being a part of our discussion. And I truly hope to be able to see you again on this broadcast soon. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Kenny. Dr. Zahir Khan, we thank him for being here today. And we want to thank you for being a part of our broadcast. Over the last couple of weeks, we've learned lots of things about just the whole population of elderly people in our 
communities. And we hope that you've learned something that you can take away from this discussion and perhaps live a better quality of life in your own home or in your own community. I want to also invite you to follow us on Facebook. Impact with Kenny Anderson is our page. We post pictures of the broadcast as well as our guests. We also post the clips from the particular broadcast that we have, and we hope that you'll definitely like us on Facebook at Kenny Anderson or Impact with Kenny Anderson. We'll see you again on our next broadcast very, very soon, and we hope that you have a great rest of the week. For now, take care.